everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Hi there. Today I have a special guest who is going to talk to us about her perception of witches. However, she's not a witch. Hello, Theodora. Thank you for having me today. My name is Molly and I'm very excited to be here with you. Welcome, welcome. I'm excited that you agreed to be on my show. Molly, you and I had known each other for about a year when we had a conversation and At that time, you did not know I was a witch, correct? That is correct. I did not know. We were talking, but I don't remember the topic. But I remember your response, and I do remember your warm and welcoming smile, and you asked, are you a witch? Do you remember that? Yes. (laughs) Definitely. Do you remember the conversation we were having? I don't remember specifically. I do remember, uh, and I also, I also remember. I don't know if it was that same day or a different day. I would, I saw your necklace too. There, there's been times where you would wear the pentagram, like, like a beautiful gold necklace. Um, but the when I was like, "Are you a witch?" I was just tickled. I was so excited because I've. It's something that personally fascinates me, Wicca and witchcraft, and I'd never met someone real life who was a witch. I've just read about (laughs) y'all. Like a unicorn. (laughs) Okay, so you read about us. So tell us what you read and when you first learned about witches. You and I have talked about uh, a class I took in college, and then there's been other stuff I've read too, of course, about, um, you know, on my own about the Salem witch trials and how, you know, strong, independent women (laughs) probably, uh, intimidated some folks got into, um, you know, a bad situation, unfortunately. But then also I, uh, in that class I took in college, one of the courses that we studied while in that class, one of the sections of the curriculum, uh, was about witches and how they are. It's a religion today, and it's something that is actively practiced, albeit not by a ton of people, but still it is practiced. And I just thought that was so fascinating that, oh my gosh, people still today are witches, but it's totally different than what, you know, you learned growing up as a kid or in movies that you saw, like, they're, witches are not green-skinned, cackling women. They're, you know, they're your neighbor. They're your coworker, you know, things like that. And it's just, that intrigued me to no end. And then when I found out you were one, I was like, what? (laughs) I can pick her brain. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. As a child, you probably read the little fairy tales about Hansel and Gretel and how witches ate children and they were mean and nasty. Was that your perception as a child? And then maybe even in adulthood? So. Weirdly enough, no. I I still was interested in the witch. Like, why did why did she become like that? You know, or we only have Hansel and Gretel's side of the story. We don't have the witch, you know. As as odd as that is, still as a kid, I was like, but I want to know more about her. Like, why is she like that? You know, and and all the things. And then when I was little, my mom loved like spooky stories and spooky shows and like we okay we've talked about charmed and i loved charmed and that was i think feel like one of the first maybe not one of the first but one of the more popular pop culture items that 
got people thinking about witches as something other than what we had known in the past in stories, you know? So that's kind of where that intrigue started. But yeah, it's like, what's her side of the story? That can't be all. (laughs) That's really interesting that you look at it that way, because quite often people will look at a situation and maybe they only know one person in that situation and they take it at their word. This is the way it is. But you were looking at Hansel and Gretel like, I want to know about the witch. Yeah. And like any of those stories where it's like, you know, a really cool example, not in childhood or later as a young adult, um, I had a, another college professor. And I don't, I don't think I, I don't know if I've told you about this, Theodora, but I had another professor, super cool lady. She wrote this book and it was actually from Grindel's mother's perspective from Beowulf. We read about her and she's, I don't know if they call her a witch, but I always kind of like thought of her as one you know, just this, uh, she's a scary person who birthed this monster and she's very powerful and nobody really knows about her. They just want to defeat her and her son. But she wrote this book and it's called Grindel's Mother. Um, I, her last name, I think, was uh, Morrison. Um, but the book is called Grindel's Mother and it's all from her perspective. And it's like, oh my gosh, you look at the whole story with a totally different viewpoint. I'll have to buy that book. It sounds interesting. I cried. I cried. I laughed. I smiled. Like, I was like, this needs to be a movie. (laughs) But it's stuff like that. It's stuff like that where it's like, you know, you can't ever take one person's, like you said, you can't take things at face value like a lot of people do. Like, like the, like the Inquisition, like the Salem witch trials. Yeah, they were independent women. Unfortunately, they were targeted for whatever reason we never really heard their side of things. And I recently, I was watching a documentary, not about witches, but it brings them up. It actually was about cats. <laughs> and, uh, but it brings up, it brings up, um, I want to say it was like the 1200s. I can't remember. And it was in Europe. And this one Pope had a problem with women. You know, it was these women that kept cats that because they would eat the rodents and they knew that was clean and they would use brooms to clean their homes because they knew that staying clean and keeping their homes clean kept them healthy and it's like they weren't getting sick when this plague is starting why aren't they getting sick they must be witches what are they doing they must be making a deal with the devil when really no it's because they knew better and they knew to keep a clean home and they were using brooms cats you know whatever and other things too they were just smarter <laughs> <laughs> they were smarter i guess smart women are witches you know <laughs> right and you know they're not always the the crazy cat lady that lives at, at the corner but that's okay if they are but <laughs> that's right but you're absolutely right they're they come in all shapes and sizes shoot correct me if i'm wrong but there there are male witches also right like if anybody can be a witch is that right okay right yeah and men are called witches too and quite often I've had to correct people when they say, oh, they're warlocks. Oh, yes. Yeah. So a warlock is actually someone who's been excommunicated from uh, like a coven or the community. Did you ever uh, watch that show, uh, Bewitched? Oh, my gosh. Uh, with uh, well, She would do this with Samantha and she was married to the human guy. Right. Elizabeth Montgomery was the witch. And they often referred to as warlock, the men as warlocks in there. Yeah. Yes. And people get that idea. But yeah, men and women, there's no gender. We're all witches. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> but see, it's like nobody, you wouldn't know. Like anybody that you encounter could potentially be something you don't expect, including being a witch. So then that was one of the things that I was also just excited about when I was like oh my gosh you're a witch like and also it gave me someone to talk to I'd never met like I had said I'd never met anybody I'd only just read things watched movies done my own research just so to have somebody in it it was neat to be able to talk to you yeah I remember your response was so warm and welcoming I thought wow she she must know about witches and wicca and not that all witches are wiccan but yeah because sometimes I get a response that's like, oh, that's a bad thing. Like, for example, 
a few a while back, my husband had mentioned to his sister that I practiced Wicca, <laughs> and her response to that was, "What happened in her life that she has to turn to Satan?" <gasps> so he. <laughs> So he had to educate her and I asked him, I said, does your whole family think that? And so he said, I don't know. I've never asked. So he asked his brother and his brother said, his brother who lives up in Connecticut, he said, oh yeah, up here in Connecticut, in Massachusetts, there are witches all over the place. Yeah, they're really, they have a strong community. And he was very positive because he he knows about witches. Yeah. He knows, like, actually about witches. That's so funny that she thought, she said, who hurt you? And why are you in the backyard sacrificing virgins to Satan? Right. Right. (laughs) And it's like. (laughs) This is a woman who's known me for 30 years. And she said it after having known you that long? Yeah. Like, oh, what happened to her in her life that she has to worship Satan? You you should have told her, that's why I look so good after all these years, sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you're Just so kind. Into it. No, that's so funny because funny, like, you know, first of all, it's, it's, it's two siblings from the same family with a totally different uh, reaction, but also that that was her reaction. I mean, I feel like that's the biggest mis one of the biggest misconceptions because uh, Satan is a part of Christianity. I mean, a lot of religions have, uh, you know, a good and an evil counterpart, but that's from Christianity. And it's like, you know, there's a history of imposing Christian beliefs and views onto pagan religions and trying to absorb them. But I, it was just a big misunderstanding. You know, that's just that's so wild to me that she thought that also after years of knowing you, too. Correct. <laughs> you're, you're so sweet. You wouldn't you wouldn't be out worshiping Satan. like. <laughs> But I did laugh when he told me about that conversation. Like, oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) So, you know, maybe I should send her some educational books. Send her, send her the book. (laughs) Yeah, I could send her uh, Taking the Flight Out of the Broom Closet. It's very educational, too. It it really is. It really is. You've got so many different perspectives. I just think it's so cool that. Well, also all the work you did, all you interviewed so many people, so many different backgrounds, so many different types of beliefs. You put a lot of love in here. <laughs> a lot of work. Yeah. And, you know, I thought it was important to have a chapter on uh, the history because even a lot of witches don't really know the history. I would imagine. I mean, so many people don't who aren't. So, I mean, it's safe to say there are people in the faith that don't. Was there anything that shocked you in creating your book? Like, did you stumble upon anything at all or people that just blew you away? Any any fact or anything that shocked you? One of the people that I interviewed who's not a witch, uh, I had interviewed her uh, through Zoom. And I remember this woman had known me probably, oh, at least 10 years and she also was under the impression that witches worship Satan. So, you know, I, I did like getting her perspective and she said, correct me if I'm wrong. And I, I did correct her and all is good. And she's a lovely lady. She just thought that we worship Satan. Everybody's thinking I worship Satan. And then you're like, I don't. <laughs> I, you know, I know that some people think that I'm cuckoo and, uh, I remember uh, I had lived overseas and I was a, a counselor at the Army Substance Abuse uh, Counseling Center. And one of my coworkers who was a counselor was talking about another counselor at a different clinic. She said, you know, she's kind of woo-woo. She has all these crystals in her office and she thinks it gives her energy. And like, she's just not right in the head. So when I heard that, I thought, ooh, I want to know that woman. I'm going to go find her. <laughs> That's such a good way to think about it rather than like, oh, how dare she talk about me? Like, let me go. Let me get to know her. Like, in my thinking, as soon as you were saying that, I'm like, what does it matter? Like, 
Oh, so what if you have crystals? Like, it's not bothering anybody else. Why does that make somebody, why does it make anybody weird that if it makes you feel better, if it's anything, it could be anything. If it's something that makes you feel good and it makes you feel better, what does it matter? As long as it's not hurting anybody else, like, why do you, have, like, why do people just automatically think, oh, they're crazy? Like, like what, what? I don't know. I just I've not ever I've not been like that. We, my husband and I were watching a documentary about I cannot remember her name. It's on HBO about this woman. Oh, Miss Cleo, that was a TV psychic. There was this whole thing about a question of was she for real or was she a fraud or what? And you know, my thinking was I'm like, if she's giving information to people and it makes them have some kind of like closure or feel any kind of peace or just like feel better and it's not hurting anyone anybody else what does it matter I agree who am I to tell somebody what they should believe and what they should collect and not collect yeah you know if I want to collect my crystals and put them around the house and people come in and say what are, what are you doing with those rocks <laughs> whatever you want to do with those rocks right <laughs> that's what <laughs> That's exactly what. <laughs> right. But yeah, so, so often people place judgment on others. And especially if they just don't agree with what they're doing. And, you know, they don't pay my bills. I don't pay their bills. Exactly. But it's it's neat, though, if someone who didn't understand wanted to ask you specifically a question. And I'm sure there's others like you that are open to answering those questions. Like, it's nice that you are someone that would educate somebody who knows nothing, you know, because that's a lot, it's a lot of what it is, is ignorance, whether it's about being a witch or a lot of things, but I'm sure be you being in your community, you get that a lot. If you share that you are a witch, I'm, I'm sure I can imagine that that's, you know, something that's so commonly misunderstood, which is kind of why we're here, you know, <laughs> like it is something that's misunderstood, but it's nice that there are people like you that are willing to answer questions and educate. One question I get quite often is, how do you know you're a witch? I'm thinking, wow, what an odd question. I mean, I think it's an odd question. That'd be just like, how do you know that you're a Christian? Or how do you know that you're Jewish? Yeah. It's a choice and that's what you practice. Yeah. It's not like bewitched and you are born that way and you have magic and you wiggle your nose or blink your eyes or anything like that, you know? <laughs> That's interesting. I remember it was not this past Halloween, but 2021, I had gone to a Halloween party. And at the party, I was wearing an outfit because I was also in a dancing witch group and we did a dance. From dancing that day, I went straight to the Halloween party and I wasn't wearing a Halloween costume. It was a really pretty dress and I it was a hat that I had made and I brought my broom that I had made. So it looked authentic, you know, like I stepped out of the 18th century. And this woman was sitting next to me and she was just looking me up and down and she was very fascinated. And she asked me, are you a real witch? I said, yes, I am. And she just kind of smiled. She goes, oh, how do you know you're a witch? And I said, it's a choice. Just like whatever you do is a choice. Just like that costume you're wearing is a choice. She was dressed up like a comic character from a comic book. I said, just like you dress up in your costume, I dress up in mine and I have my beliefs and it's a choice. Yeah. Oh, oh. But she was very open and she was very kind. I think just be kind and, you know, if you're curious, ask a question. I never, ever thought about the, that, though. How do you know? Like, you're right, because it's not like you're born into it. It's, it's just, for me, it's like, okay, well, I, I'm a Christian. I guess I was also taught that way, but like, it feels right. But I've told you before, I, if I wasn't a Christian, I would totally be a wicked lady. <laughs> just like, I think it's that, it's like a connection to something you can't see. Like, there. And I, I personally, I, I've told you before, I'm very much in touch with like intuition and like spirituality. And I do like, I believe in a life after it is like a lot of Christians do, but I also just feel like 
we some people can be more in touch with like the afterlife you know or like I I a lot of Christians I think don't believe in psychics or, or mediums and I do just because of my own experiences just like there's just things that you can't explain that have happened to me I know you've had experiences too it's you know it's just something like you it, it, it you you do make a choice but then there are things that I think add to that you know that things that you've experienced that you believe that make that choice feel right is what I'm getting to right it's a gift and we have I think we all can develop that gift if you're open to it totally you have to be you do have to be open to it if you're closed minded to it well that's just boring <laughs> but that's just boring but if you're if you're not open to it it's you're less inclined to have those experiences. And also you just, you you don't make sense of it. Like, you know, I I would perceive something as maybe being of a different dimension. I don't want to say dimension. That sounds weird, but you know what I mean? A different, you know, maybe someone from the hereafter, like trying to communicate with me, or maybe I'm having like a feeling about something that's going to happen that hasn't happened. Like those things happen. But if you aren't open to it, you're either not going to experience it or it's going to, you're going to write it off as something else. Right. And I think it also uh, depends on the connection you have with those people too. Absolutely. Definitely. Like if, if a family member has passed that you were close to, that's trying to communicate something to you or you're trying to make sense of something with them or like a friend. Oh, definitely. And that's just exciting. I, I, I don't want to be closed off to that sort of stuff. As though, so that's part of things like that, the unexplainable and just like being different and, that's something that also drew me into being interested in witchcraft. Also, I like the history of, like I know we've said it's men and women do it, but I feel like it has a strong female history. Yeah, they try to control women. Yeah, exactly. Don't, and don't. <laughs> People need to not. <laughs> Some still try to control us. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. But I will say, and I say this often, there has never been a better time to be a witch as now. I would imagine you can be free about it. Right. Look at all the metaphysical stores. Target sells woo-woo stuff. It's coming out more and more. (laughs) I call it woo-woo stuff. I love that. (laughs) I I shop at a a store called Sprouts. Yeah. They have a a little woo-woo section. What's in it? What do they have in it? They have sage and they have Palo Santo sticks. And yeah, if you go there and you look down that aisle where they sell the sage, they have all kinds of healing products. Pretty neat. Oh my gosh, I will. I will. That's so cool though. That's just at the grocery store. (laughs) Right. And so, you know, there are these companies that are tapping into the market. There's a demand. That's amazing. Well, just like, you know, there's so much even just everyday stuff that I feel like you could use. Like when you taught me about when I was switching jobs and the candle and like get a green candle. Oh my gosh. I ran so fast to the store and I got a green candle. I still have that candle. Remind me what happened. I told you. Okay. So you had applied for the job, right? I had applied for a job. I was, I was currently in a job that was so stressful. It was not helping my it was not helping my mental health <laughs> and I wanted a new job so bad. And uh, you were like, let me tell you about candle magic. <laughs> Do you remember that? And yes. I, you, you told me about the white and the green candles. And I went and I got a, um, I went and I got a green candle and I sat actually in this room and I sat, I have my big white comfy chair. I sat in and I turned all the lights off. I closed the door and I lit my candle and I, for me, I, I prayed while it was lit. I prayed. And also just like it helped focus, I think, intentions. You know, when you think something and you manifest something, it was a way to focus that. Oh, my gosh. Well, I sure did get that job. You sure did. I sure did. I still have that little candle. I'm never getting rid of that little candle. If you remember, I told you when you do this, have no doubt in your mind that you will get this job. And I got it. Exactly. You're exactly right. That's wonderful. Yes. Shameless plug for witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was cool it, because, I mean, 
like I told you, I'm a, I'm a Christian, so I prayed, but I know you've also told me about, and I know in the book you talk about, um, I mean, Christian witches is something that exists. I think that is so cool to apply that and mix the two. If you're curious, there are some groups on Facebook, some private groups, Christian witches. Yeah, it's just so neat. Yeah, they have Jewish witches. They have Christian witches. They have, yeah, it's really fascinating. If you look for it, you can find it. That is so neat. That is so neat. There's all walks of life that fall into it. You know, we're all so different, but yet the same. That's a good metaphor for people in general. Well, thank you, Molly. It's been a pleasure having you on this show. And the audience now has met someone who's not a witch, but she knows a little bit about us. She knows a lot about us. I'm a big fan. Yeah, you are. You are. And you know, I know there are many of you out there and I have met many of you and that's really, that's really neat. And I think it's important for witches and pagans to get the word out so that people don't have misunderstandings and misconceptions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Bye. Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time, and may your magic always shine. <laughs>